Welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to incorporate a support sketch so that your end user can see the length of the column and the rows in the graphic area. So let's just reorient our model and right click New Sketch. Let's select this face. Now go to Tools, Application Options, Sketch tab. Let's uncheck grid lines and click OK. Back to the Sketch tab, Project Geometry, and I'll select this point. Activate the Line tool. Left click when the horizontal glyph appears. The length of the line isn't important for us. Let's create a second line and dimension it. Row length, you'll remember, is D7. OK. The column length is D8. Click OK. All right, let's finish this sketch. Now let's go to parameters. For D7, I'll name it sketch underscore row underscore length. Let's rename parameter D8 also. I'll call it sketch column length. And I'll use underscores also to separate the words. Let's click done. Now let's make some changes to our form. Right click and edit. Let's drag the sketch row and sketch column parameters out. Let's rename these parameters. Actual row length and actual column length. And let's rename the row and column input boxes as well so there's more consistency. We'll make both of these read-only also. So set this parameter to true. Same thing for actual column length. Let's set the read-only property to true. Now I'm going to change the form around a little bit. I'll add a splitter right here. And a row object as well. Let's drag the row length and actual row length inside row 1. Let's do the same for the column. And here's the column length. We'll put it on top. Let's make sure the text appears on top of the input fields. Select Top for the Text Location property. Top here as well. And last one, Top. OK, let's close the Form Editor and go ahead and write some code. Double-click on the rule to launch the editing mode. Let's select the Sketch Row Length parameter. Double-click on it to insert it in the code. Now space equals space. Right now, I'm just going to write the equation and then afterwards explain what's going on. OK, so space, multiplication, space, open and close parentheses. Here I'll copy and paste the red cube dimension. Space plus space, distance between rows. Paste that in. So close the parenthesis, space minus sign, distance between row. And let's actually adjust the parentheses here just to make it easier to interpret. Sketch column length, space, equal sign space, open and close our parentheses. Let's copy and paste column count. 
multiplied by. Now let's bring in the red cube dimension within those parentheses. Plus the distance between columns. Minus the distance between columns. Okay, let me interpret this formula. The actual length of the row equals the number of rows multiplied by the sum of the cube dimension plus the distance between the rows minus the distance between the rows. So basically, if you have two instances, you only have one distance between the two cubes. Of course, this sum can be replaced with a row spacing parameter. Let's click OK and let's see how our algorithm works so far. First, let's change the cube dimension. Let's say 22 millimeters. Tab to register, click Apply. Now the distance between cubes, let's say 5 millimeters. Tab and Apply. The row length, 70 millimeters. Apply. Let's adjust the whole diameter now by clicking this button. And here's our message box. Click OK. So far, it seems that everything's working just fine. This concludes part three of this exercise, and in the next tutorial, we're going to learn how to hide and suppress components using iLogic. We'll see you back in just a minute.